hello students we are going to discuss uh, module 4 part a i'm going to divide this module 4 into three parts and in this presentation i will be including the first part the first part is basically regarding the product decisions so i'm just starting the presentation with an introduction to a company called as 3m i don't know how many of you have heard about 3m but 3m is an american multinational corporation and its products ranges from consumer products to industrial products at their seeds uh, healthcare products etc huge product portfolio they have so why i started ex uh, explaining with the product portfolio of uh, 3m is that because it is one of the biggest company with such a uh, excellent product portfolio and you should definitely know about these kind of products and how they are uh, making decisions about the products so these are some of the products of 3m post it notes you might have seen then um, scotch bright pads scrubbing pads you encounter 3m products every day everywhere many of the 3m's historic innovations have become an invaluable part of life for people around the globe but the story goes deeper again their adhesives and tapes help make things you love last longer they hold cell phones together and also 3m products are being used for cars your dentist might properly use 3m adhesives so does your doctor So post-it notes are capable of inspiring ideas as humble as to-do to -do list and as large as an art installation. The diversity and application of 3M's consumer products and technologies continue to grow. And you can just uh, get to know the tagline of 3M, 3M Science Applied to Life. So it is basically a highly innovative company with excellent quality products. So these are certain uh, 3M products. Are available in India also, and might be we might have come across our life. Uh, that is certain on the left side. Bonding tapes are shown. On the right side, you can see uh, the car wash shampoo or the mop, 3M mop, and uh, cleaning brushes and all those. Again, these are the kind of uh, sticking pads. Again, Scotch Bright you might have seen at your homes. That is a scrubbing pad, which is again. Then post-it notes, the sticky notes. Which we use that is also of 3M. 3M sticky notes are of the best quality. You also get other brands as well. So 3M is fundamentally a science-based company that produces thousands of products and is a leader in variety of markets, from healthcare and highway safety to office products and optical films for LCD displays. Even certain kind of uh, over-the-paint coating for the cars, car glass, all these are actually protected by 3M. And also, you might have seen uh, 3M car care services being offered across our state. So that is what us 3M is about. So the product range is very, very wide. Again, another such a big company with a very good uh, product portfolio is Caterpillar, or you can also uh, heard a sub-brand of Caterpillar that is Cat. So Caterpillar is again a great product which has got numerous product lines for industries again the service sector again consumer products are there so the major uh, product is the heavy machinery equipments of Caterpillar So with this in mind or in this context let us see what is a product a product is anything that can be offered to a market to satisfy a want or a need including physical goods it can be services it can be an experience it can be events it can be persons it can be places properties organizations information and ideas so all these can be encompassed under one title called as product anything that can be offered to a market to satisfy a want or a need what is a service any activity or benefit that one party can offer to another that is essentially intangible and does not result in the ownership of it that is product is something tangible and people can buy and use it whereas services is only thing that you can experience so that is a fundamental difference between a product and a service so these are the basic three components of any market offering whether it be a product or a service the product features and quality that is the one component services mix and quality that is another component and the pricing the value based pricing given by the company 
these are the three components of any market offering that actually fixes the attractive uh, attractiveness of the product or service in the market that is the features and quality or the service mix and quality and the pricing these are the three components that actually holds the product attractive in the market so now what are product decisions product decisions involve policies and strategies regarding product line or any product item that is any decision taken by the company regarding a product single product item or a group of products or product mix all these things you will see in the later slides what is product line what is product mix features of the product how the branding is being done how the packaging and labeling is being done and after sale service and also new product development all the decisions encompassing policies strategies in regarding product line product mix product features branding and packaging and labeling and after sale services associated with the product and also how the company is go, go about with the new product development so all these are the areas where product decisions happen so we'll just uh, let us um, take it today till uh, that is we'll be seeing on product decisions regarding uh, that is basically the features of the product branding packaging and labeling then the product line and product mix so any product has got five levels this has been um, this is a concept that has been brought in by or a model that has been brought in by philip kotler and kotler attributed five levels for a product so these are the five levels the innermost level is a core benefit okay that is the core benefit of a shampoo can be to cleanse the hair that is a core benefit then the second level is the generic product which you can say that is a shampoo that is a generic product any shampoo that is a generic product so shampoo's function is to cleanse the hair the third uh, level of the product that is a expected product so what all things the consumers actually expect from a product called this shampoo so shampoo a consumer will expect what is that is cleansing okay then that is removal of dirt and dandruff or whatever it is that is a uh, functions and then the shiny hair and all those things these are the expected outcomes of a shampoo now what is an augmented product that is a fourth level that is if a shampoo has got additional features like uh, a shampoo mix has got a conditioner in within it okay it also gives a conditioning effect if the shampoo uh, actually uh, smoothens your hair if it is a normal shampoo if there is also an anti dandruff effect or any kind of other kind of medicinal effects all these are the augmentations given to that particular product and what is a potential product what all improvements that can be made in further years to come over this augmented product is what you call it as a potential product suppose now we have got a liquid kind of shampoo in later stages might be a shampoo is developed which that is where you need not even wash your hair just rub it over your hair and go that can be a potential product for product called as shampoo so these are the five levels with which philip kopla has attributed for any product this you can apply across any kind the five product levels are the core benefit the fundamental need or want the consumer wants to satisfy by consuming the product or service for example a need to process digital images somehow to process digital image can be a need so that is a core benefit a generic product for that a version of the product containing only those attributes or characteristics absolutely necessary for it to function for example the need to process digital images could be satisfied by a generic low end personal computer using free image processing software so that is a generic level of product any low end computer which can do some kind of image processing expected product the set of attributes or characteristics that buyers normally expect and agree to when they purchase a product for example the computer is specified to deliver fast image processing a very good high resolution and accurate color scheme that is a expectation augmented product the inclusion of additional features or benefits or attributes or related services that serve to differentiate the product from its competitors 
For example, the computer comes preloaded with high-end image processing software at no extra cost. That is some kind of an augmentation over the expected person. That is some kind of additional benefit given above the expected product. So that is what we call as augmented product and potential product. This includes all the augmentations and transformation a product might undergo in the future. That is what is potential product is. To ensure future customer loyalty, a business must aim to surprise and delight customers in the future by continuing to augment products. For example, the customer receives ongoing image processing software upgrades and new and useful features. That is what you can call as a potential product. So these are the five levels of product, core benefit, generic product, expected product, augmented product and potential product. So what benefits this model developed by Philip Kotler offer to consumers as well as companies? Kotler's five product level model provides businesses with a proven method for structuring their pro product portfolio to target various customer segments. It always helps the companies to structure their product portfolio that is what has to be the product line to target various customer segments this enables them to analyze product and customer profitability that is sales versus cost in a structured way <coughs> by organizing products according to this model a business sales process can be aligned to its customer needs and help focus other operational process around its customers such as design of the product, engineering, procurement, production planning, costing and pricing, logistics, sales and marketing. Grouping products into product families that align with customer segments help modeling and planning sales as well as production and new product planning. So all these are the benefits of this, this Now how do we classify the products? Products can be classified on based, of, based on two features. One is a degree of tangibility, that is how far a customer can touch and feel. Based on that, we can classify the product and also based on the type of the user. So degree of tangibility, based on that you can classify again as non-durable good or and durable good. Non-durable good, an item consumed in one or a few uses. It is very short shelf life. That is what we call it as a non-durable good. Whereas durable goods that is we call as consumer durable goods, what are they? That is our television or it might be a washing machine or refrigerator, the microwave oven, all these are consumer durable goods. That is, that once a product is being bought, the consumer expects to use that product for a prolonged period of time. So durable goods, once it usually lasts for an extended number of uses. Now how do you classify based on uh, types of user, consumer goods and industrial goods. Consumer goods, products purchased by the ultimate consumer, that is one-to-one -one consumer, and industrial goods are products used in the production of other products or business concerns or ultimate consumers. So again, how do we classify consumer products? Maybe in marketing, we'll be learning mostly regarding consumer products. Consumer products, again, you can classify it into convenience products, shopping products, specialty products, and unsought products. So basically, two kinds of classifications are there, consumer products and business products. So consumer products, again, you are classifying it as convenience products, shopping products, specialty products. Convenience product, a relatively inexpensive item that merits little shopping effort, like FMCG goods, which we buy in day-to-day -day life, that you can call it as Convenience, convenience product. Shopping products a product that requires comparison shopping because it is usually more expensive and found in fewer stores. A slightly expensive item might be like a um, watch, might be like your dress, a jeans or some kind of a branded t-shirt. All these are shopping products. Specialty products a particular item that consumers search extensively for and are reluctant to accept substitutes. That is, in certain cases, consumers are particular about certain kind of brands. Okay, like when you buy a car, people want this kind of a car. When you buy a mobile phone, some people only use iPhones, Apple iPhones. So that is what is called, called as a specialty product. That is, people still wait for their brand to come in. An unsought product, a product known to the potential buyer or a known product that the buyer doesn't actively seek. Generally, there are certain products which buyers actively doesn't seek. Somebody has to or a certain situation has to impose a product onto them. 
So these are some kind of uh, I have represented types of consumer. These four types of consumer products and figures. Convenience product, you can say something like your soft drinks or anything. Shopping products again, uh, which you go comparing shopping. And specialty products, some more expensive products like might be here. I've shown a luxury car, or luxury building, whatever, like that. And unsought products are people products which people don't like funeral services or might be some kind of insurance all these are unsought products now what are industrial products industrial products are products purchased for further processing or for the use in conducting a business that is some products which we buy and which, which is actually part of another manufacturing that is what we call it as industrial products classified by the purpose of which the product is being purchased might be it is material that is raw materials and spare parts and capital goods that we hugely invest like machinery building and all those things and raw material so this is again uh, again explanation about industrial product types material and parts raw materials and manufactured materials and parts capital items industrial products that aid in buyers production and operation supplies and services operating supplies and repair and maintenance so in making product decisions what must we make decisions about this module is about product this topic is main major topic is about product decision so while making product decisions what what are the decisions that are being taken by the company decisions include those about what the product features have to be or the product attributes have to be the brand name of the product how shall you name and brand the product how the packaging has to be then the other related kind of services like instead of this install installation is needed that financing training support delivery etc or how the product is being made available all these are very very important factors then the warranty that fit within the firm's overall product line and marketing strategy whether this kind of a product will fit into the firm's marketing strategy so what should be the goal of these decisions when a company takes product decision the primary goal has to be differentiate the product from competitors and substitutes by delivering to the target market that benefit promised in the product's position that is every time the company has to be so much compliant to the product positioning given by the company close match has to be there from the actual product to the product positioning given to the consumer minds do any of these of these decisions apply to services versus goods yes this can be applied to both goods as well as services how does a marketer know what features a product whether a good or a service should have what features this product should have or what kind of attributes this product should have by understanding the target customer customers wants and needs that is one thing by which you, you can get to know that what kind of features they expect by understanding what competing products offer and do not offer based on the desired and agreed upon positioning for the product what the positioning has to be that is you have to match accordingly how does this understanding and and the resulting positioning arise it is simply that is this understanding and positioning is being done simply by as a result of the marketing research done by the company so what are product attributes developing a product or a service involves defining the benefits that it will offer or what are the functionalities a product will give the customer the main one is the product quality the product features and product style and design how the product is being presented to the customers these are the three important attributes the next step in product decision is how do you brand this particular product so what is branding branding is a name a term sign symbol design or a combination of these that identifies a product or services of one seller or a group of sellers and differentiate them from those of the competitors in certain case the logo itself is a differentiator in certain cases a packaging the way the name is of the name of the product like we started this uh, presentation with example of 3m 3 in numeric and m in alphabet that is 3m that itself is some kind of a unique very unique for creating an excellent brand certain kind of logos like logo of mcdonalds the golden arches that is again one tool for branding what about branding decisions what are the key decisions that is taken while a product is being branded 
So first we looked upon what the product attributes have to be. Next we are seeing once attributes are fixed, you know, what are the steps the company takes to develop it into a brand. So two key questions to be asked while taking while making branding decisions. First one, should the brand name, how should, should there be a brand name or what kind of a brand name it has to be? Clearly describe, the brand name should clearly describe the product like Pizza Hut. You know the product is a pizza. Okay. Then Burger King. Again, you know that it is, the product is burger. So that is the kind of how you want, or if it is Cafe Coffee Day, you know that is a product is coffee. So this is what uh, it is brand name can be chosen like that or provide a neutral image that is you will not know what is a product but you just give a neutral image so brand name can be like that also like mcdonald's is a neutral image domino's again that is domino's pizza is a domino's as such as a neutral image wendy's that is again neutral image because you will not know what kind of a product they are going to be caterpillar is again a neutral image you can have any kind of uh, product portfolio under that. Even 3M is a neutral brand name. Should we use family branding or individual brands for the various products in our product line? That is also one question where the decision has to be taken while making the branding decision. Whether there has to be a family umbrella branding or an individual brand. Like Maggie is an umbrella brand. Kisan is an umbrella brand. Okay, a family brand under which so many other uh, this product lines come other than that whether you should have an individual brand name so this again shows some prominent brands which is available in our country and this uh, the fido dido is always associated with 7f as a brand pringles the mustache man which is associated with the pringle coca cola the red simple pepsi is red and blue combination mcdonald's again the golden arches all these are a part of so what is the importance of brands to consumers? Identification of the source of the product. Brands help to identify what is the source of the product. Okay. Assignment of responsibility to the product maker. It gives a responsibility to the product maker because consumers have to identify the product with this brand. It is always a risk reducer for the consumer. That is, if we buy a good brand, we feel that we are at a lower risk. Search cost reducer, just search for that particular favorite brands rather than searching for across all the brands. Promise bond or pact with the product maker, that symbolic device that is when uh, symbolic feeling consumer gets by using the brand, the signal of quality. So these are the importance of what all can be branded. I think we have discussed this in the initial modules, that is what all can be branded, physical goods can be branded, services can be branded. Retailers and distributors can be branded. Online products and services can be branded. People and organizations can be branded. Sports, arts and entertainment can be branded. Geographic loca locations can be branded. Ideas and process also can be branded. Like Save Trees is an idea. It is a brand. Help Age India is again an idea. Cry. That is Child Relief and Youth. That is again an idea which is behind, uh, that is being done by an NGO. That is again a brand. Geographic locations like God, Kerala, the God Soul Country, Incredible India, Australian Tourism, all these are again branding geographic locations. Sports, Manchester United, the team, that is a sports brand. IPL, again it is a brand. So this is again, I think this also we have discussed in the earlier modules. I have just asked you to go back and see what this particular uh, brand is. That is Chikita, sir. Banana is being branded. There is again another orange brand is there, which is branded as Sunkist. Perrier is again a mineral water brand. It's very, very expensive mineral water, but natural minerals are being are there in this particular water. You can generally see sports persons drinking this brand of mineral water. Maybe the name is Perrier. So that is the importance of branding. Now we are just going to move on to what about the packaging decisions? So product attributes. What are the decisions? How the branding decisions have to be taken? All these are contributing to the product decisions. Now we are going to look on to what all has to be included while designing how the packaging has to be. What is the role of packaging? Roles of packaging is first role is to protect the product, product protection. 
facilitates its use, easiness of using that particular product. Now we can see, previously we used to get uh, ketchups in glass bottles with uh, metal kind of uh, caps, which you have to open with a bottle opener and then you have to, it's, it's very difficult for the ketchup or the sauce to come out of that bottle. But now we can see a lot of improvements have been brought into the ketchup bottle package. I'll show you an example in the next slide. Then uh, packaging also facilitates as an advertisement of promoting the product and also provides information about the products and its use. Like label gives the information, these are all the ingredients and till which date this product can be used. All those kind of information is also being given through packaging. All these roles can be sources of differentiation. Packaging involves designing and producing the container or wrapper for a product. Okay, how the, the shape of the Coca-Cola bottle, that is again the role of packaging. And also they have got intellectual property right for that particular packaging. Certain color combinations, a logo on the packet, all these are important. Labels identify the product or a brand, describe attributes and provide promotion. So say the you know, excellent packaging of Hanes Tomato Kitchen. This is American brand, again now available in India. So you can see how well the packaging is. It's, it's put in plastic bottles with uh, just open up caps where you can just squeeze the ketchup into your plate and then you can close it. So it's very, very easy to operate, easiness to operate. This is again giving the information regarding the, see what are the ingredients within a product or whether it is organic and all those things. This product contains fine fruits of wild blueberry. That is product information is being given in packaging. Packaging again used for protecting the product, safeguarding the product. This is how very innovative packaging for eggs, microcorrugate cardboard package for six normal eggs. These packages for from two pieces space saving without glue, one part from cells and the other one for closing. Cells are used to hold the eggs and the closing part stabilizes them. You can take out the eggs by pressing the snapping edge on the bottom and the eggs will emerge from the package. So this is again a very, very innovative package. Here again, certain cases, packages access advertisements. Take a look at the brand Cuddle and Kind. These are uh, toy brands. They sell hand knitted dolls which are made by artisans in Peru to keep the local economy by giving them a fair wage. So this is being made, made by locals in Peru. Cuddle and Kind also promote that for every doll they sell, they provide 10 meals to a child in need. So that is what is being written on the packaging in that blue and white you can see in the back of the dolls. Cuddle plus kind, handcrafted with love, one doll is equal to 10 meals. So that is again a promotion for that particular product. So people tend to buy more. Now what about the additional services and warranties? What roles do they play? Examples of roles of additional services, installation, delivery, the ease of purchase. Because these are the additional decisions, product related decisions company has to take. How the installation delivery is being given to the consumers. How much of warranty has to be given, repair and maintenance, how it has to be done, whether the, it gives any financial assistance or credit availability, prompt handling of pre-sale inquiries and after-sale questions or complaints, ease of purchase, customer loyalty and satisfaction, and also buyer training, personal training, that is again to induce customer satisfaction, how to process the order fast. That is also all these are later decisions taken, taken regarding the product. Now we are moving on to the major, the important topic in this model that is what is a product item, what are the product line and product mix. Product item is a specific version of a product that can be designated as distinct offering among an organization's product. That is one single item, that is what you call it as a product item, might be a shampoo or a personal care product, that is an item. Product line, a group of closely related uh, product items. That is, might be under personal care products, you'll have number of related products like uh, shampoo, moisturizing cream, liquid soap, conditioners, all, all these comes under one particular product line. And product mix, all products that an organization sells. Sometimes Procter & Gamble might be having shampoos, it might be having soaps, it might be having cleaning liquids. Uh, it might be having healthcare products. 
So the complete set of products that is what we call as a product mix. The product portfolio consists of product lines and mixes. Product line flows and related product offerings. Product mix, total group of products offered by the firm. And also the product portfolio should have strategic decisions, that is a variety, the number of product lines the company has to offer. Whether the company should have only a single product line or multiple product lines, that is a strategic decision that has to be taken. And assortment, the depth of each product line, that is how many variants are there under each product line. These examples. You can see Pro Procter & Gamble's portfolio of house and home products in American market. So the product mix, you can say that is the width of the product, that is towards the right, from left to right, if you see, that is a product mix. PNG has got dish care liquids, household cleaners, batteries, laundry products, paper products, snacks and beverages. So all these constitute a product mix. And under each of these product category, you can see number of other brands are there. That is what we call as a product line, like laundry. It's a product line. Under that laundry product line, you have how many brands are there? Tide, Cheer, Bounds, Gan, Downey, Trept, Era, Febreze, and Ivory. So many brands are there. So that is one single product line. Snacks and beverages is again another product line. It is, it is shorter in length than the laundry product line, where you have got brands like Pringles, Melstone, Foggers, and Um Cafe. So all these are the product line. The complete the total width gives you that is uh, what is a product mix. Product mix of ITC. The complete products is a product mix. You can see under each category that is a product line. So this is what you call it as a product mix of Dauber. Again, this is taken from their website. You can see the product mixes, healthcare products, personal care products, food, home care, consumer health ethical, and professional range. Under each of these sector or each of these uh, product categories, you can see again longer product lines are there. Like healthcare, you have got Daba Chantraj, Daba Honey, Daba Glucose D, then again some other kind of syrups, tablets, healthcare tablets. All these comes under the uh, healthcare category. So what are the decisions taken under product line? That is how to maintain the product line. So product line length constitutes of number of items in that particular product line. So decisions taken regarding product line length is whether the product line has to be stretched again. That is whether upward stretching has to be there or downward stretching has to be there. That is length beyond the current range whether it has if suppose it has got four brands under that product line whether we have to extend again to eight brands or something like that or whether we have to cut short the length of that brand uh, that, that particular uh, product category that is what we call it as a stretching upward as well as downward stretching another decision that is being taken on product line is filling that is again further more uh, products are to be added in that particular line length lengthen within the current range So this is what you can see, the uh, product line length management, the concept of line stretching I told whether you can do upward stretching or downward stretching. Upward stretching example is that Maruti initially just launched, ventured in the market with Maruti 800. Later they did the upward stretching by introducing Omni, then Esteem, Valeno, etc. Toyota again upward stretching by uh, having a separate brand called as Lexus. Downward stretching when surf Surf is a brand of Unilever. So Surf, when it actually introduced another brand under the detergent category named as V, which is lower price to Surf, that is what we call it as a downward stretching. That is, you are introducing products which is lower priced in that particular product line. Certain cases, they stretch to both sides. That is, upward stretching as well as downward stretching is there. Like, uh, just take the example of Hindusan Motors. Hindusan Motors, uh, the fundamental product was Ambassador Cars. They also had rural transport vehicles, which is downward stretching. Hindusan uh, Motors also had a joint venture with Mitsubishi, and they had the forward stretching as Mitsubishi Lancer Cars. 
So this is what we call it as two-way stretching. What is line filling? Each item should produce a just a noticeable difference, like uh, scooters, uh, which we see in the scooter market. We see we have TVS 50, TVS Scooty, TVS Suzuki Mobike, lots of uh, variants of the similar kind of product is there. That is what you call it as a line filling. That is just noticeable differences are only there between these different products. Line featuring often promoted brand in line. That is certain. That is a particular product line is being always being featured by that particular company. That is Luxus, that kind of a product line, which is always featured by Unilever. Then there is line modernization. That is uh, keep on modernizing the line, keep on bringing in innovative products in that line. This is generally there for uh, tech products. That is one example I put it here is Intel. Always it comes up with new, new kind of processors. That is line modernization. Line pruning. So line pruning is like cutting short of certain, a certain kind of products in that line which is not very profitable that is what is called as a now how do companies extend the brand or what is brand extension we have there is we know lots of lots of uh, famous brands like coca cola maggi uh, cadbury's and sunfeast all these are or uh, all these are brand names so how do companies use this particular brand name and then do extensions? That's what we are going to see. Take the take the brand into products which have a brighter future. That is using the same brand name. They are actually adding on more products under that particular brand name. Take the example of Ashirwad. Ashirwad is a brand of ITC. Ashirwad actually introduced into the market with Ashirwad Atta. But now they have got various other products also under that same brand name like Ashirwad. The spices are there. Ashirwad ghee is there. So this is how they have extended that particular brand name to different other product categories also. Again, you can take the example of Dettol soap. Dettol is actually antiseptic liquid. Now they have got soap, liquid soaps, hand wash. All these are again extending that particular same brand name. Same thing can be you can take for Life Boy. Life Boy is again the first product was actually soap but now they have got hand wash liquids are there life by hand sanitizers are there so all these are kind of brand extensions mcdonald's again mcdonald's the major product is burger but now lots of product variants are being added under that particular brand name so that is again uh, uh, extending the particular brand name Crest is a toothpaste again beyond that like any any toothpaste here in India there's an American brand even Colgate if you take they have brand extension you have got Colgate toothbrushes there uh, then you have got uh, Colgate uh, mouthwash might be there so all the plaque remover might be there so all these are extending the brand name. but extension whenever a company goes in for brand extensions extension must be relevant extension must be sustainable that is company must be able to take forward that particular brand extension brand extensions a brand extension occurs when a firm uses an established brand name to introduce a new product like maggi introduced with uh, noodles but now we have got maggi ketchups is there um, maggi coconut milk powder is there then we have got maggi certain kind of masalas are there Maggie soups are there. So this is how that particular brand name has been extended. When a new brand is combined with an existing brand, the brand extension can also be called as a sub-brand. When some brand takes over another brand, then it is called as a sub -brand. Extensions can be again of two types. One is extending the product line, line extension. Here the parent brand is used to brand a new product that targets a new market segment within the product category. A very good example is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a basic brand. So Coke's line extension is like using the same name Coca-Cola. They have they are actually targeting another consumer segment who are diet conscious by introducing a product called as Diet Coke. So using the name of Coke, they have introduced that is brand extension is there, but they are actually extending the brand line. The line extension often adds a different flavor or ingredient variety a different form or size or a different application for the brand. Another kind of brand extension is category extension. The parent brand is used to enter a different product category from the currently served by the parent brand. An excellent example is that for Wills. 
Wills is a pioneer in cigarettes in India. Wills is a product of ITC, the Indian Tobacco Company. Wills actually use the same brand name and they have extended to totally a different category of clothing, that is clothing and uh, luxury personal care products. That is what we call it as a Wills lifestyle. So this is what we call it as a category extension. Using the parent brand name, the brand name is being used to extend to another different product category of clothes from cigarettes to clothes but the same brand name is being used so this is what uh, regarding uh, that is today's session today we have actually discussed what is the importance of products then we have seen what are the decisions taken regarding products that is what all kinds of decisions basically product attributes brand branding decisions packaging and labeling decisions other supporting service decisions all these we have seen. Then we have seen what is a product portfolio, what is a product line, what is a product width, what is a product mix, and how do means what are the uh, decisions taken under these kind of uh, topics. And then we have seen what is brand extension, two kinds of brand extension. In the part B, we will see what is new product development and what is product life cycle and consumer adoption. So this we will see in part B. And later in part C, we will see that is what is pricing and promotion. So thank you.